In my last video, I gave you Mel Kuyper's backstory. How this average dude obsessed with the draft grinded all the way from the time he was a senior in high school to eventually become the first NFL draft analyst on TV, a gig that paid a grand total of $400. But then we talked about how he took that $400 and turned it into $7 million, all while doing something that he's just had a burning passion for since he was a kid. But admittedly, today amongst many NFL fans, Mel may be known more for his wild swings and misses than he is for the the stuff that he actually gets right. He's got people constantly questioning his credentials, from NFL GMs to random cats over on Twitter. And while I really do respect Mel Kuyper for the work he's put in, I can't ignore the facts. I mean, men lie, women lie, y'all know the rest. So the $7 million question is simple. How accurate is Mel Kuyper Jr.? And today we got a few numbers and I'll say up front, some of these are not gonna be super friendly to the OG NFL draft analyst. Nonetheless, we'll go through some of the information that's floating around the internet as I attempt to get you the answers you crave. But other than that, you already know what time it is, bros. Cue the way. Before we jump in, a quick word from our sponsor, Manscaped. So April is National Testicular Cancer Awareness Month. And what you may not have been aware of is that at least one man is diagnosed with testicular cancer every single day is real. So with every day that passes, men's health and cancer prevention screenings get increasingly more important. Now, if you followed the channel for a while, you already know about this beast, the Lawnmower 4.0, that along with many of the other dope products that Manscaped offers. But on top of providing the right tools and solution for safe and easy Manscaped, Manscaped has also partnered with the Testicular Cancer Society to help spread awareness for overall men's health and early cancer detection. Together, TCS and Manscaped are committed to raising awareness for the most common form of cancer in men ages 15 to 35. Plus, they give support for fighters, survivors, and the families that have been impacted by testicular cancer. Now, you can perform a simple self-check routine right at home while you're enjoying your favorite Manscaped products. The Crop Mop Ball Wipes are actually a perfect example. So visit manscaped.com TCS to learn how to check yourself for early signs of cancer. And you can also share their funny but educational video with loved ones, you know, your partners, maybe your dad, XYZ. As always, you can use code FLIMLO20 for 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com. Join the Manscaped movement today and don't forget to take care of yourself. Shout out to Manscaped once again for sponsoring the video. Without further ado, so let's just jump right in. There's a website called thehuddlereport.com that some of y'all may have heard of. And on said website, ever since 2002, they've been grading mock drafts from all over based on accuracy. So here's basically how their grading system works. They award two points for every player who's matched with the correct team in the first round. Then you also get one point for every player who you at least accurately predict will be taken in the first round. So if you got all 32 first round picks absolutely correct, that would give you a perfect score of 96. So has anybody ever gotten a perfect score? Man, hell no, nah. you know how hard that'll be? You gotta hope nobody do nothing stupid, nobody makes a trade, it's just way too many damn variables. That's why we watch the draft in the first place because nobody really knows what the hell is gonna happen. Now the highest score ever recorded was actually a 59 and that score was recorded just last year in 2021. So who got the high score? Was it Mel? Maybe McShay? Daniel Jeremiah? Maybe it was Peter Schrager. Nah, it's actually a cat named Josh Norris who works for a website called Underdog Fantasy. Just last year in 2021, dude broke the record on the Huddle Report with the highest score in the website's history when he accurately predicted the draft homes of 16 out of the 32 players in the first round. That's dope, but how did my boy Mel do? Actually, Mel had a really rough go at it last year, only accurately predicting five out of the 32 first round picks. That's about 16% accuracy as compared to Josh Norris's 50%. Meanwhile, Mel's boy or rival or however you wanna look at it, Todd McShay, fared a little bit better than Mel with nine out of 32 or about 29%. But while Mel had a down year in last year's draft, the man's been doing this job for over 40 years. And a lot of these dudes came up watching Mel, but they're now playing in the game that he basically created. 
And to be real, they might be kind of making it hard for my boy to keep up. I'm pulling for Mel. We're going to shake back this year. So let's go back a few drafts to see how Mel fared, let's say, around 10 or so years ago. In 2013, Bleacher Report actually posted an article titled, Who is the most accurate NFL draft expert this year? They too used the huddlereport.com as a resource. So once again, shout out to them. So did any of the big wig talking heads actually make the top five? The answer is yes. Former NFL draft analyst and both future and former Raiders GM Mike Mayock actually finished third. Mike put up a great grade of 49, though some would say his skills didn't necessarily translate to his GM job, but that's neither here nor there. Now, Todd McShay actually didn't post his rankings in time and he ended up missing the cut, but they were able to determine that he would have scored a 46 had he turned his draft in on time. So again, a really solid score. Now, it sucks because every single year they do these damn articles, it seems like my boy Mel have his worst performances. Man, Mel finished with a 38, bro. So again, definitely not the best performance. Now, keep in mind, this 2013 score was Mel's worst since 2008, meaning it was his worst performance in five years, and of course, that's when they happened to do this article. But I did actually notice something. Even one of Mel's worst scores is still actually higher than the average score on the huddlereport.com. Barely, but it's high. Now, when they averaged out his previous five years, so that would have been 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, and 2013, Mill actually came out with an average score of 42, which was good enough to rank him fifth overall amongst all the entries over that five year span. For him to still fall into fifth place over that five year span does suggest relative consistency over time. So, Mill Kuyper's not the best in some years, not even amongst the best at predicting how the NFL draft is going to play out, why does he remain the primary figure every single year when the draft rolls around? Maybe it's because he's the go-to guy for the biggest sports network, or maybe his rants make him must-see TV. But the main reason is because while he may not be the best, he is the guy who likely inspired all the dudes who may be considered the best. Let's take the record breaker himself, Josh Norris. Here's a quote from Josh at only 25 years old, six years before he would break the record. When asked about Mel, here's what he had to say. I saw the fact that he could do it full time and I thought, damn, why not me? Everybody's got a star somewhere and he shows that it's possible. Then six years later, after breaking the record, he was asked about Mel Kuyper again. And it seems that he may have been coerced to kind of prop himself up and or put Mel down but he refused to do so. Here's what he had to say. I would never say a single bad word about Mel Kuyper. Imagine how many draft analysts are out there. None of those would exist without Mel Kuyper. Mel Kuyper is untouchable. Now, this isn't the first time we've seen this phenomenon play out in sports, although it normally happens in the field of play. But unlike so many sports analysts or hosts who are solely judged on a subjective basis, the thing that Mel does can actually be tracked. So whether he sees it this way or not, he's actively competing with every single dude that grew up watching him. So before you make fun of Mel, keep in mind, it's Young Bucks out here right now gunning for us all. Now, Mel had to know this day would come as he once recalled the moment from his early days as an analyst. Here's a quote. Kids would come up to us after we did some of our tape stuff and they'd say, I want to do what you're doing. I want to be like you. And all the co-hosts were amazed that that's what they said. Today, those kids have grown up and they've honed the techniques and been raised with this new technology that Mel has attempted to adapt to. And it kind of reminds me of that one Bane quote from The Dark Knight Rises. Mel merely adopted the technology. These cats was born in it, molded by it. Still, here he is at 61 years old, hairline sliding on back, but damn it, the man's still up there doing his thing every year. And yeah, he's taking his lumps and has some really bad misses. Still, the respect for Mel amongst guys in the industry doesn't just stop with Josh Norris. Matt Miller, another draft analyst who's with NFL Draft Scout, had this to say. I don't think my job would exist without him. He kind of laid the groundwork for that role of an analyst slash evaluator. And even though former GM Bill Tobin once hilariously dog Mel for criticizing his draft selection, Bleacher Report reached out to at least 11 NFL presidents, GMs, and coaches who've gone on record to say that they found Mel's work invaluable and that they respected what he did and how hard he worked. And amongst those who showed respect for Mel were Super Bowl champions like Barry Switzer and Dick Vermeil. 
Now, of course, these endorsements don't get as much publicity as people dogging dude out because that's more entertaining. I did just want to quickly illustrate the point that when it comes to Mel Kuyper, it's not all negativity and disrespect. Now, with that being said, we all know Mel ain't the most accurate when it comes to these mock drafts and his rankings. Not to say that he's bad or washed up, but there are plenty of guys out here today who do a better job at getting these things correct. But none of that changes the fact that when you think of an NFL draft analyst, Mel Kuyper is likely the very first person you think of. And that's because he was one of the very first people to ever take on this gig. Over the years, he's morphed into more than just an analyst. And oftentimes when you watch a Mel Kuyper segment you're not just watching for the information you're watching for the full package the on-air charisma the classic Mel Kuyper look and let's be real we like to see Mel get pissed off when the draft don't go the way he predicted it's great but it's that passion and conviction that's made this dude must see TV for 40 plus years but that's also the reason why it's so damn memorable when he misses especially when he misses big and you might not want to admit it, but when that Mel Kuyper big board drop, you tune in. You want to know how Mel's got it ranked, even if your only purpose is to try to find every little thing that's wrong with it. But dude's been in the game so long, he's not afraid to be wrong, and he's openly admitted that he knows he may not be the best when it comes to predicting the draft. But he trusts his process, prepares his ass off, and then just lets it fly on draft night. Now, if you're grinding towards something and not just out here floating, I'ma strongly advise you to check out the last video I did on Mel's backstory. For the cast that's on the grind trying to build something, it's actually pretty damn inspiring. So if you want to check it out, man, just click the link on the screen right here and enjoy. My name is Flemlo Raps. I'll catch y'all boys in the next one, man. Peace.